And Stuart, thanks so much for joining us. A lot in this report, so I want to get right to it. You had a strong quarter with a 28% increase in new orders and a 23% increase in deliveries year over year, but that came at a price. How much did higher mortgage rates hurt you in terms of having to rely on pricing and incentives? Well, if you really look at our numbers, uh, Diana, you, you see that um, our margins are actually up year over year. Uh, margins uh, kind of act in uh, seasonal fashion. And so if you look at our fourth quarter last year versus first quarter this year, it has about the same relationship that the fourth quarter had to the first quarter the year before and years before that. So it really didn't come at a price. In actual fact, what we've seen is that incentives have started to moderate just a little bit. Now that, of course, varies as interest rates trail up or down. Um, but our program has been solid from sales to deliveries, and our margin is actually stronger than our guide last quarter to this quarter. Uh, we thought we'd come in somewhere around 21.2. We actually ended up coming in at 21.8. Um, and that's a strong proxy for the fact that the new normal is kind of stabilizing a little bit. Demand trends remain strong and interest rates definitely have an impact on affordability. Now, I see the average price of a home, though, that sold in Q1 dropped from 421,000 uh, down to 421,000 from 448,000 last year. Was that an actual price drop or are you just selling smaller, less expensive homes with fewer amenities? Yeah, it's a combination between the two. Some of it's going to be mixed, but some of it is certainly uh, that prices have come down. They have moderated. I guess from an inflation standpoint, that's probably positive news. Um, but overall, we see a fairly robust environment from the standpoint that demand is strong, and we all know that supply is short across the country. But you said in the release, we remain focused on consistent production pace, driving sales pace. Now, other buildings, though, are pulling back and we're seeing single family housing starts in January actually came down month to month, which you wouldn't expect right before the spring. We talked about this a couple of weeks ago. Why are you building so much when others are pulling back? Look, we've had a contra view and the contra view is there is a housing shortage in the country. Uh, the country needs more dwellings, uh, especially for workforce housing. We think that it is important for the home builders to be building through and compromising a little bit on margin in favor of providing affordable, attainable housing across the country. And so we've that's that's the direction that we've taken and we've leaned into our ability, our strong balance sheet and our strong ability to provide housing when it's needed. But you stay land light. Why? Why do we stay land light? We stay, we stay land light because from a balance sheet standpoint, and if you look at our balance sheet, uh, we're running at a debt to total capital ratio of below 10% right now. Um, that is an effective way to generate returns and to generate shareholder returns while at the same time providing the housing that the country needs. Uh, and if you look at our cash flows, you look at the way that our company's configured right now by design, if we continue to maintain pace and maintain production, we're able to, uh, to reduce the cost of production and therefore actually produce more affordable, more attainable housing for the country. And that's, that's good for the workforce. Okay, and I think Melissa has a question for you. Stuart, at what point do um, mortgage rates have to drop in order for you to stop incentives altogether? Um, hard to tell. Uh, I think that um, I think there are a lot of different factors that are uh, that are going to feed into that. Uh, interest rates will probably, it, it, in order to stop incentives altogether, there's always been a normalized level of incentivizing in the new home uh, market. Um, but I would say a couple hundred, a couple basis, a couple hundred basis points is probably where we're going to have to drop to get to a new normal, and we'll start to see at that point uh, the um, uh, the existing home market start to come back into play. And Stuart, we've seen a lot of fluctuations recently in mortgage rates that have pushed buyers in, pulled them out. Do you see that seven percent is now the new normal? Because there's a lot of talk. Maybe we're not going to see it come below seven percent on the 30-year fix. You can buy it down to five, but what do you think is that buyer's level? Well, the reason that we have been buying down to five, although it's been less of a buy down than it had been uh, when sticker shock prevailed. Um, 
it it, it seems that uh, that uh, the the buy downs a pretty good indicator as to where uh, the consumer really starts to come in at normalized interest rates, and so that might be at five five and a half percent. Uh, but it doesn't feel to us like we're going to see mortgage rates fall in the near future. And so we continue our production levels, even as interest rates remain high, using those buy downs to keep meeting the consumer um, at the intersection of their affordability and where we can produce homes at a solid margin.